Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. And I have spent uh, the better part of the last day or so in beta heaven. I'm beta testing um, Luminar 4, of course. I'm beta testing On One uh, Photo Raw 2020. And there's something else I'm beta testing that I can't talk about right now, but it's fun because it, you know, it makes you, well, number one, things are different, right? So it causes you to think differently and have to sort of shift your perspective on things, which kind of stimulates the old creative brain to kind of, you know, like you're kicking things around, moving cobwebs out of the way or whatever, because I feel like a lot of times when you, you get into a routine editing with a particular piece of software, you know, you may resist change, um, but... Um, you know, I feel like a lot of times I get, um, I don't want to say stuck, that, that kind of oversells it, but you kind of get into a routine and you sort of become un, unwilling to change and therefore you might just kind of not learn as much because you're always kind of doing things the same way. So um, I like when products change and so it's fun for me to, to test new stuff. Anyway, there will be stuff coming about uh, those products as soon as I can do that. But today I am in Topaz Studio 2 and I'm having fun. I have this photo here which I shot at the Pantheon in Rome a few years ago. For those of you that are interested, it's F22 for 30 seconds. And this was um, a blue hour in the evening, as you can tell, that's the original. Um, hence, all the people blurring out, that's because of the 30 seconds and the F22. Um, also, like the little uh, starburst and the little pinpricks of light and all these lights there and there and there, um, that's also due to the F22. So if you're in a lower light and tighten up that aperture, um, you can get those kind of uh, starburst or sunburst effects. So just something to be aware of. Anyway, I was playing around in studio and I've sat on this thing for about a week or so and I finally settled on that as my final edit. So I'm going to go reset these filters and then let's uh, walk through this workflow. Okay, here we are with the base photo. The first thing I did was precision contrast and that's simply because um, it's very flat, right? Um, I've got that longer exposure so the light's, you know, pretty... Um, pretty well distributed, I guess, which also means because of the longer exposure, a lot of the shadows are being exposed and for some reason, well not for some reason, but that makes the photo look kind of flat because it's lacking contrast. So I went into precision contrast and just amped that up a little bit. Um, so I went into micro, low, medium, and high and just moved every one of those. I didn't really do anything else, but precision contrast, I've talked about that in other videos, it might be my favorite filter in studio and in fact one of my favorite filters in any product it's really powerful i think it does an incredible job so you know again if you take a look at it um, there's the before and there's the after it just gives the photo a lot of punch and that was the first thing i did because um, it was um, immediately as i looked at it i was like you know i kind of like the photo there's some things i like about it i like the moving crowd i like the composition i love the architecture and, and whatnot um, i like all the lights blah 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 but it's just flat right so the way to overcome a flat looking photo is to add contrast. So that's why I went there. Um, next up was a basic adjustment. And as the name implies, I did some fairly basic stuff. I actually came in here, did some saturation and a little bit of temperature reduction. And so let me uh, just turn this off again. There's before and there's after. Actually, you can probably hardly even tell. Um, it, it is very minor. I don't think, yeah, I didn't do anything else. So. Um, it's a minor bump, and in fact, I could probably turn it off and you may not notice, but anyway, I went with it. Um, and at this point, I was like, you know, I like the photo, but honestly, and I've said this in other videos, I don't really like the yellow kind of looking lights that you get in cities at night. Um, I just, I don't know, yellow is a fine color for sunsets and sunflowers and things like that. But for city streets and the way it reflects on here, I'm not a big fan of the yellow for that. And to me, these lights are too yellow. So I went about trying to change the yellow. So that was just a quad tone. And you can see it, it made a lot more blue in the photo. And one of the things I love about quad tone is, as the name implies, it gives you control over four different aspects, right? So blacks, whites, shadows, and highlights. And you can just come in here, pick a color, and then, you know, in each of these, you just click on that, you pick your color, you move this around for the... Um, uh, the, the luminosity, if you will, or the exposure uh, value, uh, the brightness is probably a better word for uh, whatever color you choose. Move this around to pick the color, say OK. The ones that were here are just the ones that it defaults to when you open the tools. So it was here and I just took this and started dragging it until I got to somewhere I liked and I think it was like 54. And you know, it does create quite a bit of blue because the blacks and the shadows 
um, are taking on a lot more of the blue, so that makes it impact and it really reduces the the uh, the overabundance of yellow to my eye. So I was feeling pretty good about it. I was like, from there to there, and, and that's where I kind of sat on the photo. I said, you know, I like it, but man, I'm just not sold. I'm, I'm not done. I, I don't know what I'm missing. So um, I came in with dual tone next. Dual tone is the same as split toning. It allows you to basically pick a color and a saturation amount for the highlights and the shadows independently. So in this case, I just came into shadows and I picked a bluish kind of color and just dragged that. I didn't touch highlights, I just went with shadows. So if I turn this off, you can see the before and the after. Again, I'm reducing that yellow. Personal preference, but to me, if you compare that, which is all yellow in the basically the bottom half of the photo, and then I added quad tone, reduced that quite a bit, and on top of that, added dual tone. At this point, I really liked the photo and, and I thought I was done and this is where I really sat on. I've had this photo in that stage for about a week and I just liked the photo but I wasn't sold so I saved it as a, a Topaz Studio file. You can see it's a .ts2 so you can just hit file and save as or whatever and pick that file format so if you're ever editing a, a photo in studio you can save your work and come back to it if you're undecided much like I am because I'm, I'm perpetually undecided on a lot of things. So um, anyway, I was there, I sat on it and I liked it. But you know, one of the things I didn't like was the, the light over here, let me show you the original. Um, you know, you've kind of got some pinkish orange kind of the outside of, of this light. And because it was 30 seconds and this light was pretty big, it really blew out. Now it made that nice starburst, which I liked. And I think it gives a nice little element of interest to that side of the photo that kind of uh, it, I don't know, it sort of helps me because I really like the line of tables and chairs and, and I like how the line kind of curves around the front of that uh, column, which is a fountain, um, and how the people are going there and it kind of leads you into the, um, uh, the Pantheon. So it's kind of like there's anchoring elements on both sides. But what I don't like is after all these edits, it's really taken on a pink hue. And one of the things I tried was HSL and I went in there and tried to reduce some of those colors and it didn't really work so well for me. So. That's another reason I sat on it. I was kind of undecided. And that's when I had the idea, hey Jim, how about a black and white or a monochrome, right? So I like monochromes. Cityscapes, I think, can look particularly cool in monochrome, especially at night or blue hour like this. And so that's when I went and got the black and white filter. And I was feeling pretty good about that because I got there and I was like, golly, that that looks a lot better. Number one, it does reduce the, the issue with color there because the color is gone. But also there's something about it. Um, it just appeals to me um, as a black and white. Now, if you're not familiar with the black and white tool, you have all these sliders here and they apply to each of the colors that's present, uh, that are present in the image, right? So if you look at this orange, I'll just reset this and I'll reset yellow as well. And basically you can see how that changed. Now keep in mind the orange and yellow are basically around those lights. And so what I did is I bumped both of those up and you can kind of see what's happening to the photo. It's creating a bit brighter version of those oranges and yellows, but because it's uh, desaturated, it's just brightening that portion of the photo. Uh, same with this aqua, I'm gonna reset that. And if you look here at the top of the Parthenon above that, uh, oops, there's the original, uh, above that, that script there, uh, as I bumped up the aqua, I think I was at like 35 or something, it's brightening that. Um, and then the last thing, blue, I was down 19. Let me reset that. If you look at the sky, a lot of blue there, and I took that down to like negative 19 or something, and it darkens that. So I highly, re oh, actually, you know what? I did gray as well. So let me reset gray, and if you look at, it looked like that, which actually looks pretty cool, um, but I wanted to brighten it a little bit. So there's a lot of gray present, because if you look at the image, lots of grays and kind of the buildings and the, and the street and all that. So I bumped that a little bit to the right, and I think I was at nine. Uh, that just kind of brightened that portion of the photo. So something to think about when you're editing a black and white. Don't, uh, don't be intimidated or, and don't hesitate to use these sliders. All they do is basically adjust the exposure value of the color that each, uh, each of those represents in the original image. So there's the before and the after, and let me turn off black and white. There's before, you know, and again, I still like that, but I just wasn't sold. The colors weren't just right, and uh, I, I don't know, I just felt like black and white was gonna do it for me, and it did. I got to there, um, and after making all those adjustments I just showed you, I was feeling pretty good. 
But then once again, part of the brightening um, of the image basically reduces shadow, right? Because you're brightening certain aspects of the image or, or certain uh, portions of the image uh, to brighten those colors, which is gonna reduce contrast. So I went back to my favorite filter, Precision Contrast, and I just decided to amp that up again. And so in doing so, I used Micro, Low, and Medium, and that was it. I didn't do anything else with Precision Contrast. And that got me to my final, which is there's the before precision contrast and there's the after. And so keep in mind, you can do a precision contrast multiple times, right? I used it down here, but you know, if I did not uh, do it there, my final image would be kind of flat. So I've effectively done, well, not effectively, I have done precision contrast twice. And I think it's resulted in a richer, more interesting final image. And I'm actually kind of, not kind of, I am loving uh, this final. One more time, there's the original. And there's the final high contrast, black and white, a few tips and tricks, reusing filters, massaging those color channels, if you will, in the black and white filter and things like that. And, and I really think that adding the dual tone and quad tone helped impact the, the look of that final black and white because that's what it would look like with what I've done without these color adjustments in quad tone. So there's adding in quad tone, which actually looks quite nice. And there's adding in dual tone. So, you know, I might could give or take that one. Oh, you know what I didn't say? I forgot to point out on dual tone, I actually did some masking, right? So I actually erased that from uh, that portion of the image. So I forgot to point that out earlier. But regardless, I could probably remove that. There's the before and there's the after, but I kind of like it the way it is. Um, and that's my final result, my friends. High contrast, kind of detailed, a little bit gritty, black and white of a cityscape at night. And I uh, hope you like it. I hope you uh, got something out of this. I do appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. And I'll be seeing you real soon as I continue to experiment with all these products that are in beta and some other things that I'm working on as well. So see you soon, friends. Hope you're doing great. Have a great day. Take care and adios.